Hello beautiful people, welcome or welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, my name is Emma and this video is going to be a little bit more laid back and vloggy. So today is the 20th of March and exactly seven days from now, I have two francophone guests coming in from Belgium. They're actually my mom's friends from like three decades ago and next week we get to spend the evening with them right here in Hanoi. Although I'm sure that we could probably communicate with each other in English, French is still their mother tongue. And because I did spend some time growing up learning French, I thought this would be a great opportunity to bust out whatever level of French I still have left and make my guests feel more welcome by speaking their language. The problem is I haven't practiced French in a long time and I have exactly one week to brush up on it. So I thought it would be a fun idea to take you guys along with me. The total amount of time I've spent learning French is two years throughout the span of 20 years. The first time I learned French, I was probably five or six and my mom taught my brother and I French um, at home for a couple months. And then at age 10, I enrolled in a language center and had lessons every Saturday, three hours per lesson for a year straight. After graduation at age 21, I had a little bit of spare time on my hands, so I self-studied French a little bit again. And after that, I actually found a tutor online and I studied with her for five months pretty consistently, twice a week, an hour each time. Salut tout le monde, bienvenue à une nouvelle vidéo. Je m'appelle Emma et j'espère que vous allez bien. Mmh. Euh, ça fait euh, deux années en fait, je pense. Deux années depuis que j'ai que la dernière fois que j'ai pratiqué mon français. Sauf que les temps que je écoute un peu de musique, euh, j'écoute de la musique. Euh, la prochaine semaine, j'ai du guest. Euh, qui vient de qui vient de Belge et euh, qui vient au Belgique. Ouais, ils viennent de Belgique. Okay, so here's the game plan. I've already identified my strengths and weaknesses so that I can best prioritize my time this week to know what skills I want to focus on. My first strength is pronunciation. I feel like I can mimic and produce the sounds pretty well when I practice diligently. Vocab wise, I do have a basic foundation in French and the words that are a little bit more technical, a lot of them do sound like English. The sentence logic in French is pretty similar to English and Vietnamese as well. So that's a big plus. And I only realized that this was a huge factor in learning a language when I learned Korean and the entire sentence structure is completely flipped around which meant that I had to rewire my entire way of thinking when I was learning Korean. But French is pretty straightforward. It's pretty much like English and Vietnamese, which are the languages that I use the most. My most apparent weakness would be grammar. My conjugation in present tense is not too bad, but that's kind of where it ends. I don't conjugate too much in future tense or past tense. In French, nouns have gender. Nouns can be feminine or masculine, and the verb also changes depending on what gendered noun it is being used with. So, yeah. If the Francophones speak fast in the actual speed that they speak within themselves, I am done for. I am just gonna go sit over there instead. So what I'm gonna do is to take even further advantage of my strengths and make strategic adjustments to certain weaknesses. With my pronunciation, I know I could get back in the flow of things by shadowing certain videos and podcasts, focusing on improving both my pronunciation and intonation. I could also learn certain expressions and filler words to make my speech sound even more natural. With vocab, because a lot of the more complicated words are similar in English, I could probably guess my way around them. So instead of studying lists of words, I decided to just expose myself more to new vocab in context by listening to podcasts, and I'll settle for whatever I can pick up in seven days. Same goes with the gender of the words. Learning this systematically takes a long time, which is not what I have right now. As for sentence logic, because it's similar to English for the most part, I'll do some conversation practice to get the logic going. I want to be intentional and pick topics I think will likely come up with my guests and practice mostly around those. 
With grammar, I will focus on basic past tense conjugation and not so much future tense, because surely we'll speak more about what we did than what we're going to do. Again, choose what's going to give you the most bang for your buck. With the speaking speed of the francophones, I'm not too worried because they know I'm not fluent and I'm sure they'll accommodate by using a slower and simpler version of French. I aim to spend the first three days doing only input and shadowing, then the remaining four days to continue that, plus speaking output. Okay, I think I will go for the first one that you to recommend in. Inner French podcast. Right here. Pour commencer, il faut faire la distinction entre la langue maternelle et une langue étrangère. La langue maternelle, la langue maternelle on n'en a qu'une, on a seulement une langue, une langue maternelle. C'est la langue, la langue qu'on apprend qu on quand, on quand on est enfant. On a besoin de cette, langue, besoin de cette simplement langue tout simplement pour parler avec, parler ses, parents, avec ses parents, avec ses amis, avec ses amis pour, communiquer, pour communiquer, pour transmettre des messages. So yeah, this is basically how I go about shadowing whenever I learn a language. I try to keep the audio track on and just repeat after it quite immediately, lagging behind just a little bit. If you're interested in a more detailed video about how I go about doing that, I have the full routine right over here if you want to check it out. But for the purposes of meeting my guests for one evening, I will be focusing more on the pronunciation of words and the intonation of my speech, like the melody of my speech, and less so on vocab and things like that. Here are my takeaways from the podcast. Number one, the most important aspect of language learning is using it to understand things and communicate with it. To communicate means to share and exchange info, news, and ideas, and it doesn't say anything about how accurate your grammar has to be. Say you're at a sandwich shop and you're hungry, you can point to the menu and say, this one, please. Or, can I have the house special chicken sandwich extra crispy, please? And if your goal was to get fed, then you can achieve that with either of these sentences. This is communication. Number two, knowing the grammar helps, but isn't central to using a language. That's not to say that grammar isn't important, because it is, but more so to encourage you to put your language to use in real life situations with real people, even before your grammar is perfect. And with time and practice, your grammar will surely improve as well. Number three, Use your target language to comprehend things every day. Whether it be a podcast, a video, an email, the news, it don't matter. Try to find content that is slightly above your level so you can challenge yourself and learn something new. And last but not least, keep it fun. Find content that piques your interest, and if you get bored of something, take the initiative to switch things up. The more interest you have in something, the better you can stay focused, remember what you learned, and make progress, right? Another day, another podcast. So instead of trying to find the best thing out there, rather than spending more time searching for something else, I'd rather spend it on practicing. So with that, I'm going to stick with Le Coton podcast and find another episode in this series. Honestly, I stayed up until like one last night to practice shadowing. After today's shadow session as well, I realized that I have not used my mouth muscles and vocal cords in this way in a long time. Because essentially when you're pronouncing words in any language, you're basically contorting your face muscles and your tongue and your vocal cord in a certain way to produce those sounds. But because I have not spoken French in a long time, these positions that my muscles have to put themselves in feel a little bit unfamiliar. So I do feel a little bit of tension in my jaw muscles. Maybe later today I'll do like a little jaw massage or something just to release a little bit of it out. So far, understanding new words in French has been much easier than in Korean. Even if I don't look at the transcript, I know how the words are written. I know what words are being used. I can deduce a lot from English. And there's a reason for that. English is a Germanic language, yet it has an overwhelming influence from French. In fact, a whole whopping 41%. Add another 15% direct influence from Latin on top, which is also the origin language that French is mostly derived from, and you've got a substantial overlap between English and French. But it wasn't always this way. 
Originally between the 5th and 11th centuries, Britain saw the settlements of Germanic tribes like the Angles, Saxons, and Jutes, as well as Viking invasions from Scandinavia. The settlers intermingled with the native English people, and this resulted in the development of the Anglo-Saxon language of Germanic origin, which we now refer to as Old English. In 1066, the French and Normans from Normandy, France, came over in the Norman conquest and took their place as the ruling class in England. But they didn't intermingle with the rest of the citizens, unlike the Germanic tribes that came over earlier. And so, for the next five centuries, while the court, academia, and aristocracy exclusively spoke the dialect they brought over called Anglo-Norman French, the rest of England, the regular citizens who worked the lands, spoke regular Old English. A great example of the difference between words from Anglo-Saxon and Anglo-Norman origins can be seen in the different names for meats and the animals they were derived from. The people who worked the lands used English words to call the animals cow, pig, and lamb, while the French nobility sat at their tables in their castles and ate boeuf, bork, and mouton. So now in English, we call those dishes beef, pork, and mutton. Of course, Old English slowly absorbed elements of French from the ruling class and evolved into Middle English. And this is why, in the modern English language today, a lot of words we see in law, medicine, the government, academia, etc. are still very much French-derived. Hello, it is about quarter past eight. I just came back from tutoring and had dinner. And today I'm going to start brushing up on some basic French grammar. I'm going to focus my time on the verbs that will get me the most bang for my buck, which are être, avoir, aller, faire. Je suis, tu es, il est, les, nous sommes, vous êtes, ils, elles sont. Je fais, tu fais, il est, fait, nous faisons, vous faites, ils, elles font. Je fais, tu vas, il est, va, nous allons. Vous allez, ils, elles vont. So you know how in English when you address someone else as you, the singular you and the plural you are basically the same thing. And you conjugate all the verbs in the same way as well. However, in French, they do have separate words for addressing a singular you or a plural you. And that means all the verbs are conjugated differently as well. I haven't had to address multiple people at once in French before. So I've only ever used the singular you, like du. Tu es, tu as, tu fais, tu vas. But because I have two guests, I think I will be using the plural you quite a bit, which are vous êtes, vous avez, vous faites, vous allez. So I'm going to have to get familiar with using that. Vous êtes sûr, vous êtes prêt. Qu'est-ce que vous voulez faire aujourd'hui à Hanoi? I think for questions that I want to ask my guests, I'll probably look them up beforehand, just to be sure. You gotta do what you gotta do. Donc aujourd'hui, je dois parler un petit peu de français parce que c'est déjà le quatrième jour de mon réapprentissage de la langue française et je vais le pratiquer avec de la musique. J'ai quelques chansons que j'aime bien de mes artistes préférés et je vais écouter de la musique et en même temps euh, lire les paroles aussi. Mes artistes francophones préférés sont Stromae, Angèle et Frero de la Vega. Et si on parlait de Stromae, euh, actuellement j'ai un rêve. Mon rêve est un jour au futur, je peux, je peux aller au concert de Stromae parce que la musique, les paroles, l'artiste, l'atmosphère, les lumières, bref, tout sont très très cool. Une autre façon que tu peux améliorer ton vocabulaire, c'est avec des musicals. Les paroles, c'est juste comme les gens parlent en vraie vie, mais avec de la musique, je trouve. There's a storyline as well in musicals, so maybe that would help you learn vocab in context. My go-to musical in French, which is the only musical I know in French, is Notre Dame de Paris. This musical actually has tons of iconic songs. I guess it's so good that they took the live version and made it into actual albums that you can listen to. 
Yeah, I used to love this. This is probably their most iconic song, Belle. On this fine day, I got caught up in work and video editing, so I did none of the above. Yeah, that's the reality, guys. Aujourd'hui, je voudrais vous présenter une de mes chaînes YouTube préférées pour apprendre le français. Instead of shadowing a podcast, what I'm going to do is shadow a Q&A, a get to know me Q&A. And the purpose of that is to, I guess, practice the potential dialogues that I could find myself in with my guests on D-Day because I'm essentially getting to know them, right? And they're getting to know me. And then afterwards, I already have like certain sentence structures or ways of expressing ideas when I want to talk about myself. So I will also be inserting my own information at points to practice potential dialogues. Today, I'm going to shadow phrase by phrase to practice my pronunciation. Sounds of individual words. Je suis Elisa et sur cette chaîne. Je suis Elisa et sur cette chaîne. Je vous aide à améliorer votre français. Je vous aide à améliorer votre français. Et à parler de façon plus naturelle. Et de parler de façon plus naturelle. Est-ce que tu as toujours voulu faire ce métier Donc quand j'étais petite, je voulais devenir... Quand j'étais petite, je voulais devenir... Je voulais devenir vétérinaire parce que j'adorais les animaux. Je voulais devenir vétérinaire parce que j'adorais les animaux. À mon tour. Pour moi, quand j'étais petite, je voulais devenir la personne qui travaille à la bibliothèque. C'est comme une cassière, mais pas avec les articles, mais avec les livres. What's also cool about Elisa's channel is that with every video she makes, she also has a PDF file you can download that has many of the expressions and new words that she uses within the video, which I find to be very, very helpful. This actually wasn't available when I studied her about two years ago, but it is now. It kind of makes me want to learn French again, but I don't really have a reason to besides this week. I'm really glad that her channel is evolving so much and there's so much value for us learners to reap from her channel. It's pretty nice, very nice. I also learned some common expressions that you can insert into pretty much any conversation. They're short and sweet responses or exclamations to questions or stories that the other person tells. They're phrases which have a high return on time investment the best type of phrases to learn when you're pressed for time. So throughout this week, I've done a lot of shadowing and listening to podcasts. I've learned a little bit of grammar, just the ones that I will really need to use. And today I'm going to be brushing up on my adverbs. Adverbs are a crucial aspect of learning any language. Perhaps in your vocabulary, you already have a lot of the nouns, verbs, and adjectives, but adverbs and conjunctions are really what's going to help you string all of your ideas together and express them with a little bit more nuance. Loin. Près. Mm, le resto n'est pas très loin d'ici. En fait, c'est... C'est assez près d'ici. Si tu tournes à droite, et après ça, encore tourne à gauche, tu peux le trouver. It's not going to be useful for you to know all of them. Study what you're going to use. Exactly what she's saying. I always believe that when studying a language, it's important to prioritize words that you're going to use often. First of all, they have importance to your life. And second of all, the fact that you will be using them often means that they will more easily stick in your mind. And as for words that you don't use that much, your brain will automatically remove it to make space for things that are more useful to you in your everyday life. And I think that's a very smart thing for your brain to do instead of cluttering it up with things that it will rarely use. Bon, aujourd'hui c'est le jour. J'ai des invités qui viennent de Belgique et ce soir on va dîner et après ça 
prends un petit café, je pense. Ce matin, j'ai fait des tote bags comme cadeau pour mes invités. Et euh, j'espère qu'ils aiment bien. Ils sont mignons, hein? Ça, c'est mon outfit du jour, mon OOTD. Ce t-shirt, c'est de Uniqlo. Ce jupe, je l'ai fait moi-même. Et ce sac, d'où je l'ai pris, tu me demandes? Ben, je l'ai fait moi-même aussi. Today, I practiced some French filler sounds because they're just things that you put into sentences to make you sound more natural without having to memorize, I guess, words with actual meaning. <laughs> but yeah, that's all my practice for this week. It's also a little bit bittersweet because I don't know when I'm going to return to learning French or when I'll get to use it again. It is a beautiful language. I just don't use it that often. That's all. Anyways, I'm going to head off now and I'll see you guys there. Donc, uh, Installez-vous bien et c'est parti. As a country, Vietnam has experienced its fair share of colonization and conflict, one of which was with the French for about 100 years from the mid 1800s to the mid 1900s. Through it all, we've always looked for the positive sides of things, valued our peace and independence, and have done everything possible to attain it. As for me, I'm a 24-year-old girl who has been lucky enough to grow up in this peace and independence, while at the same time observing the remnants of French presence in Vietnamese lives today, especially in my own life. Personally, all four of my grandparents lived through the mid-1900s, learned and spoke French. And if you're lucky enough to find folks of this generation in Hanoi who are still alive today, chances are they still remember some French from a time once fluent. Both my parents also use French in their careers, especially my mom, who is a medical professional, and the same goes for many of her colleagues of that generation. So I got curious, where else could I find traces of the French presence beyond my own family? If you take a quick walk around Hanoi, you can see the influence in the architecture, like that of the Hanoi Opera House, with its art deco style of tall ceilings and grand concrete pillars, or in St. Joseph's Cathedral with its Gothic arches and spires. These details are reminiscent in the houses that line the boulevards of the central district we now call the Old Quarters or French Quarters. And let's not forget about the food. Here's the renowned Bang Mi, where we took the French baguette and really ran with it, turning it into a staple of Vietnamese cuisine. A rustic, honest, and wholesome delicacy that highlights the fusion of the smoky charred meat that contrasts perfectly with the brightness of fresh, colorful vegetables. This is, without a doubt, a must-try if you ever get the chance to visit. And of course, you can hear the influence in the Vietnamese language today. We have adopted a good amount of French loanwords into our vocabulary, words to name concepts that we didn't have before, that were only introduced to us when the French came along, like ballot, Balo, cyclo, cyclo, balcon, bancon, just to name a few. So as you can see, the traces of French presence throughout the decades are still very much alive. And through it all, the Vietnamese people have always looked for the positive sides of things to continue moving forward. You know what they say, seek and ye shall find. And now, the part you've all been waiting for, did my French hold up in conversation with the Belgian guests? Let's find out. Oui, mon père euh, est peur quand j'ai quand j'ai voyagé. Il a eu peur. Oui, très très très, 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 très peur. Ma grand-mère aussi. Oui. Il y a seulement Mais, moi qui euh, <rire> dit. Vas-y, vas-y. Vas Elle m'a expérience à de travailler pour avoir euh, les donations téléphone. Oh. Ah. Moi, ah, je suis voilà. étudiante. Est-ce que tu veux quand même genre tu te plais? Pour uh, l'école, like, we ask for funds. For the school. Yeah. yeah. Mais aux États-Unis, oui. les gens ont l'habitude. Mm -hmm. Ils acceptent ça. Yeah. Uh, oui. Parfois. Parfois, 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 qui ont des moyens et oui. sont oui. volontaires de redonner à l'université. Oui. Le temps pour ton undergrad, tu allais à l'école en Belgique Oui, avant ça. Elle fait une vidéo, comment j'apprends le, le coréen. coréen. Ah ouais Oui. 
Et demain, je retournerai avec les Coréens. Ouais. Et pourquoi les Coréens Parce que quand j'étudie le Coréen, il y a beaucoup de similarités oui. avec le Vietnamien. Donc, quand j'étudie le Coréen, je peux mieux comprendre le Vietnamien. Oh, j'ai essayé, mais les caractères, like the character, it's like it uses a different part of my brain. All in all, with the goal of communication in mind, I'd say it wasn't half bad. I realized that I can understand more than I can speak, so there's clearly lots of room for improvement. Honestly, I came into this week expecting it to be my final rendezvous with the French language and came out with an open invitation to stay in Belgium. And when that time comes, I'm gonna double down and learn French properly again. Anyways, if you keep a keen eye on your surroundings here in Hanoi, you'll easily notice the traces of French influence that still remains. From the rustle of the majestic trees that line the boulevards, to the shutter windows that keep the breeze flowing in the summer. From the voices of generations past, to the culinary delights that we now call our own. So I guess this won't be the end of my French, not today, and not for a long time. In fact, as of writing this outro, I just received a message from another pair of Belgian guests visiting Hanoi next month. Kind of strange, innit? Donc, chers Français, un jour pas trop lointain, on se retrouvera encore. À bientôt!